it. They should like it pretty good because it's the food that they normally eat. I have struggled with this. This is supposed to be... Welcome back. Thank you so much for joining me today. Today I am making chicken food and we'll see how it goes. Um, I have a bunch of things that I've kind of been saving aside a little bit just to use up to make chicken food, so we will see how it goes. Now I am going to take the stem off. Now one of my little pumpkins, I don't know if you can see it, it got soft. So, I mean, it's probably perfectly fine for eating, but you know what? I'm going to make chicken food. I'm going to just put this in. So I'm going to actually throw this in the microwave for probably a minute or two because I want to um, get it a little softer because I'm going to be sending everything through a meat grinder and I want to make sure I don't like bung it up. If you're new here, I'm Catherine, the Arrow Garden Homesteader, and thank you for joining me today on this uh, adventure. We'll see how it goes. Okay, well that took about three minutes in the microwave to soften up. So, let's get this show on the road. Um, going to just cut everything up into smaller pieces, and I'm going to mix it all up together here in this big pot. It's basically the biggest bowl I got, so. Um, I did see someone doing this on their channel and well I didn't actually see them because their camera was kind of pointing in the wrong direction but uh, I listened to them do it um, so I'm going to give this a try and see how it goes now this is more for supplemental feeding in my opinion um, I will still be giving them their regular food they just get that free feed because I've got one of those massive feeders but you know if you have or if you wanted to get the there's like an additive you can add to chicken food to make sure that they get all their essential vitamins and minerals and stuff like that and you want to make sure you get the right protein content and then you can certainly turn this into a full food for them look at that one of them started sprouting That's probably why it went soft seeds go flying. Okay, let me get my hands clean. So I have lots of things that are going to go in. I have some of the celery from the arrow garden downstairs that is kind of looking not quite so good. That's going in. This is basically taking the greenery that we can produce over the summer. So if you do this in the summer and you've got all this greenery and just stuff that you don't use on the edges of your lettuce patch or whatever, um, make food for your chickens and then over the winter they get some greenery. This is a funny story. We went and bought corn and I didn't realize it was whole corn so I sprouted it. So this is this is deer corn. But they're gonna get that. So if you buy deer corn it's whole. Chickens can't eat it and I don't have a mill to process or crack my corn. So I sprouted it for them. Now this is the perpetual spinach. I actually tried to pull out the whole thing and the thing grew so big like it's just trapped in the arrow garden. I think arrow gardens need to have bigger holes so that things are a little easier to get out of. But that's all going in. So here's where we're at so far. I probably should have broken this stuff up a little bit more. And then finally, the last of the green stuff is going to be, I'm going to clean this out. So um, I did figure out, yes, this will continue sprouting, but the problem is that the, um, the stalk, if you don't grab it from the top here, it's not tender anymore. The stalk actually gets really woody. So it's a one and done, I think, on the peas. You probably just want to do the um, whatever that first harvest is. Yeah, so that is, I should probably cut this too. I'll cut everything down a little bit at least. Yeah, that is really tough. Yeah, well, hopefully this doesn't uh, bung up my meat grinder. Yeah. There we go. Okay, and I will see how bad the roots are. The roots are... Look at that. The roots are insane. They actually went over and took over the other side. So I'm going to take all of this out as well. So 
So this one I'm not gonna I'm not gonna chop it up. It's probably fine. But then this will be I will take this all apart, clean it all up, and might try sprouting corn on the other side. Just to try to go through and have a supply of sprouted corn for them. But this is this is done for now. Let me get this out of the way. a couple of eggs. Now I'm just going to start with two. I uh, dropped water everywhere when I was trying to pull out the sprout container. So yeah, the um, eggs got wet. So, so these ones are definitely going in, shell and all. I'm going to clean up that mess. Okay, get some water. Now I have a bread heel here that I'm going to put in as well. This will act a little bit as a binder. And then, finally, I'm actually going to put in some of their chicken food, so I don't know how much I'm going to put in, but I'm going to put some in. Okay, uh, this is a four pound container, so it's probably got two and a half to three pounds. Now obviously they're getting this free feed, so I don't need to put a ton of it in here, but this is going to also help to act as a binder. And I've got some water. That's probably not enough water, but... And I need to mix everything up. Because I want the food to kind of soak up the water. Okay, so this is going to probably need to sit for a few minutes, but I want to have it so it holds together when I squeeze it. And I might need to send it through the meat grinder just to have it sort of bring everything together. But yeah, see the food is soaking that up. Okay. So it's still a little wet, but... Now you can add in, if you've got like masa or flour, just uh, any more bread. Anything that's kind of like a, um, I don't want to say grain, but you know, anything that's kind of like a bread product that has, you know, it can um, absorb liquid, you want to put that in, and that'll help be your binder. So this is, like I said, I don't know what it looked like in her video, I just saw her squeezing it and it was staying together. So that's what I'm kind of looking for. I might need to put in a little bit more of their food just to help it stay together. But what I might do is I'm going to leave this for a few minutes and I'm going to set up the meat grinder and start passing this through and see what kind of texture I'm getting at that point. That might be a little more informative. Okay, I got everything set up. Now I'm looking at my wheel and I think it's a little... the mincing uh, wheel, the cutting blade part, it's too small I think. She was using a bigger one and hers were coming out as larger pellets. I'm going to give this a try anyways because I'm already committed to the process. It's a little bit smaller, it's okay. Um, they're used to a crumble anyways. They're not really used to having the, um, you know, the bigger things. So, I'll bring it over here a little. So see how it's now, it's holding together more? So that's what I'm looking for, where it holds together. So the, the green stuff will get broken down in the meat mill, and that will help, hopefully, bring everything together. So this is probably going to be noisy. I will just uh, blow through this. Hopefully it won't be a problem. Apparently I can only stuff so much on top here. Okay, that was definitely messy, but I got the right consistency. It was holding together. I do have, I don't know if you can see this, but it was coming out of the uh, meat grinder as little pellets. So uh, I did have the wrong uh, die for the cutting process. This is just going to be really, really fine. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this, I'm going to put it on some of the dehydrator trays I have for the fruit leathers, just so that it doesn't fall through. And I'm going to dry it up a bit so that it's not so wet. And then I will give it to the chickens and see how they like it. They should like it pretty good because it's the food that they normally eat, plus more greenery mixed into it, so it should be pretty good for them. So I wanted to give you an update on how the apple cider vinegar is doing. I want you guys to know that the things you see online, they're never perfect. They're never happy. They're never easy. 
There's always a struggle that goes on. I have struggled with this. This is supposed to be something that's relatively easy. You put apples in a jar, you add some water, a little bit of sugar, you stir it up for a month and voila, you have apple cider vinegar. Or in my case, you have something that smells like vomit. Pretty sure it got contaminated by something. So I thought, oh, okay, maybe it was my fault. I did something wrong. I didn't stir it enough. So I started another one because I had a few apples left from the big, huge batch of apples that I had gotten for free. So I started up another one because I thought, oh, well, I'll just, just replace it with this one. No, this one tastes like, this smells like vomit as well. So apparently I've got some contamination going on and I don't think it's going to happen this season. So I will just have to put this to rest, get rid of all of this nasty smelling apple vomit stuff and try again in the fall. And you know what? It's okay. It's it's a learning experience. So whatever I was doing, I need to find a different method. You know, maybe I need to sterilize my instruments or use metal spoons when I'm stirring. I don't know. I will just have to read up and, and figure out what's going on. So there doesn't seem to be any obvious sign of infection. Like, oh, it's a little cloudy, but I had two started last time and one of them was infected and of course I didn't realize this and I poured it right into the uninfected one so I couldn't even salvage the uninfected one it smelled bad this one looks the same like I it looked like it was uninfected it just had the bubbles and it fermented and all that and yeah I opened it up and it reeked so now I'm just gonna have to put this on hold and try again in the fall so but I wanted to let you guys know that you know hey it happens. Stuff happens. Like nobody's perfect. I'm. This is a learning experience for me. I don't know what I'm learning from it yet. <laughs> Be more careful when I'm stirring things or shaking things around. I don't know. But I will revisit this next fall when I can get a whole bunch of apples. And hopefully next year I will have better success. But in the meantime, I will not be doing apple cider vinegar this year. And this is why. So I will... I will just have to revisit this next year and hope I do better. The plant update is going to be pretty quick this week because I've been cleaning things out, but the celery has been doing amazingly well. I have been taking some off the bottom. As you saw, I used some for the chicken food. Over here, I used this for the chicken food, and the plan is to also use this side for chicken food as well. And then I can clean out the, hopefully I can clean out this arrow garden. I couldn't get this mass out. It has so overgrown that it's like bulging. It's insane. I've never seen that before or to that degree before. And then finally, the cilantro down here is looking pretty good. So I think I just fed with arrow garden nutrients this week because I'm not going to mix up a whole bunch of nutrients and have them go bad. So, because um, I just didn't need that much this week. But that's how everything is doing down here, and there's, like, just cilantro upstairs, that's it. Literally, that's it. And I was going to use the cilantro for the chicken food and totally forgot, so... Yeah, uh, I do think I should be going through some seeds, though, and see what I need to probably either get or get going on. So I did dehydrate these overnight. They are a little hard, so I think the chickens are just a little confused on how to eat them, but uh... So before I wrap up this video, I want to go over my seeds real quick to just see... So I'm probably going to do about the same thing I do every year, so... I don't think I need any of those. I'm going to check. So these are Rio Grandes. I actually really enjoyed the Rio Grande, so I'm going to grow more of those. I will probably try to do more beans. I feel like I have a uh, love-hate relationship with beans. They grow well, but they don't produce enough, fast enough, before the winter comes. So I'm wondering if I should try doing those in the spring. See, I tried them in the spring one time before, and they didn't do anything until the fall. So maybe that's a good thing. And then I probably need to get more romas. I would like to do peas, but... Again, those didn't really produce very well for me. I don't know if it's just because of the way I had them growing or what was going on, but yeah, I don't know. 
So I probably need to buy more Roma tomato seeds because I don't know that I have any more. I don't know if I should do onions this year. My onions were kind of a uh, abysmal mess. They were really tiny. They're still actually out in the garden. I feel like the garlic didn't do all that well. I would like to do cabbage, but I've got so many slugs that a lot of these things are just sort of, I feel like they're impossible for me to grow. I would love to grow some rutabaga. You know, maybe I should try beets, because I do love beets. Although I do still have a lot of pickled beets, so I'm probably okay for that. I have a good variety of things, but I don't have the... I don't think I have any Roma tomatoes. Okay, I got lots of beef steak, but we don't eat a lot of beef steak. Okay, I do have Romas, so it was good that I checked. I do still have some Rio Grandes, so that's good. And then, what do I have behind the Romas? Try to keep things together. So that was the Independence Day cherry tomato. I did not grow that last year. I think I grew... No, I didn't grow that one either. I grew a hybrid cherry tomato last year, and it did really good, but it... It's like it was... It cracked. So it wasn't the greatest of cherry tomatoes. Um, and I think if I'm going to do cherry tomatoes, I'm going to do those... Yeah, so this is the one I did. I'm going to do cherry tomatoes, I'm going to get a smaller plant, and I'm going to do it inside in the arrow gardens, because I have more control over everything there. So maybe I will do one of these white cherry tomatoes, or what's this other cherry tomato? Indigo rose cherry tomato. So that might be what I end up doing for the um, arrow gardens. I'll probably get some cherry tomatoes going inside. I'm going to start my... Romas and Rio Grandes in the Aero Garden to see how that goes. And then pepper-wise, I might do a couple of Anaheims because I didn't have good success with them, but if I think I start them in the Aero Garden, I might have better success. Might be able to put out a stronger plant and I'll get, I'll actually get peppers this time. And then I will need to get some, okay, I do have jalapenos. Don't know if I have enough jalapeno because I think this one's been, this one's been open. So I will need to go get more jalapeno seeds. But I think other than that, I have not had good success getting ground cherries to even sprout, so I don't know if it's worth trying again. This one's the husk tomato, so I don't know if this is the one that I want. I want the one that you can snack on, the little ground cherries. So, might be worth doing some cumin in my raised bed. I might need to reseed my chamomile. Um, I want to do some pickling cucumbers, so I think I need to actually go and get pickling cucumbers because I think all of my seeds are old. So this is not a pickler, and I don't think that's a pickler either. So I will need to get some pickling cucumbers. So uh, I might try amaranth again because, you know, it's, it's a good seed that I could give to the chickens. Plus I could just cook with it. And then maybe I will do more. The zinnias did really well out front last year, so I might do that again. And then mixed flowers. Watermelon have not done well for me. We have not produced one watermelon. Oh, there we go. I do have some pickling cucumbers, but these are really old seeds. So if the seeds behind it are not picklers or newer, then I will probably need to get some pickling cucumber seeds as well. And then I don't know if I'm going to do zucchini this year. I feel like I don't eat enough zucchini. Even with one plant, I kind of struggle to keep ahead of it. And I got lots of pumpkin pie pumpkins last year, so if I'm going to grow some squash, I might try to get a nice winter squash like a um, butternut or a... I did get some sweet meat seeds, so I should dig those out because they're not actually in this bin here, but I should get some sweet meat seeds and um, get those ready to go as well. So, a random pea down here, so that's just these kale seeds, dill seeds, and then more tomato seeds. So, okay, well, I got my marching orders. I'm going to have to pick up a few packets of seeds, but it's not that many. Probably most of the packets I'm going to be picking up will probably be just for um, me to set up for sales. So these are the little photo books you can get at the dollar store. So let's just try to keep my seeds somewhat contained and somewhat in order. So the seeds that are in here are mostly only seeds that are for the garden. I took out all of the seeds that were like smaller varieties that would do well in the arrow garden. So, And I did go outside and give the chickens some of that food that I made. 
I don't feel like it was a resounding success. I think my chickens were more confused than anything as to what those things were I was throwing at them. So I'm not sure it was successful or not. I think they will snack on it when they find it, but who knows. But anyways, hope you found this video useful. Thank you so much for joining me today. I'll have some videos up at the end that you might also enjoy, and I will see you next time on the Arrow Garden Homestead.